I'm going to talk to you a little about a system which has made life very easy for me. I mean, we talk a lot about how accurate an implant should be and how accurately we can assess everything. But the point remains in the end, how accurately can you fit it? Because there lies the rub, as one would say. If you can't fit it accurately, then all the investigation you've done, all the formulas you've applied, literally go to naught. And as one would say, perhaps the greatest offender and detractor which stands between good and poor vision is astigmatism. Therefore, correction and exact positioning of your implant is vitally important. When we are doing quality lenses, or even if you're doing a regular lens, the most important factor is a wow factor. The next day, the patient should sit in your chair. He should be happy. And he should say, great doc, I'm happy. I can see well. In multifocal IOLs, even a residual elastigmatism of 0.75 can lead to a poor functioning and lead to a lot of problems, including poor reading vision. And nowadays, people are, as one would say, they want a lot. Dil mange more, as the saying goes, and they really need more. The answer is simple if you use a mono, but in the next step, you, the important thing is how do you fit it at the proper axis? Various instruments have been used since the ages. All sorts of alternate methods have been designed. And perhaps the most accurate before this new systems came were the Akahoshi electronic marker system, which I also had the pleasure of using for some time. But going back, the precision is important. The question is why? 40% of surgeons think that 10% of rotational errors are acceptable, but that is not true. If your axis is off by even a very small figure, the, the power of the lens which you have really changes radically so that you don't get the effect which you require. And if you're off by 30 degrees, that means you really have nothing left over. In the status quo, as one would say, of toric IOLs, a number of such studies have shown essentially that uh, cataract procedures, which involved a toric IOL, a lot of patients are not getting the quantum of astigmatic control which they really deserve and which they require. So the accuracy of placement is vitally important, as important as in designing a watch, for that matter. If we can calculate an IOL with perfect accuracy, but if we can't place it, all the efforts are wasted. And that is there exactly where this direct way of precise IOL using the markerless system came into place. When I first bought the system, I thought it was a great waste of money. I could just as accurately mark it with my, myself utilizing a slit lamp, which is what I did, or utilize the, the Akaoshi system, which I thought was great. But it's only when you start using this system, then you come to realize what it really matters. One of the big advantages of this system is that you can do your biometry and the data goes on to a little drive. You feed in the drive into the Callisto which gives you all the information transferred across. And then the data is transferred into the eyepiece of the operating microscope. I use a Zeiss 700, which gives me the data inside. And the big advantage is that I can, at the same time, see what I'm doing, as I'll demonstrate to you in a little later on. So the whole secret essentially is that you must get not only an accurate measurement device system. I use the 700. I've started using the topography system, which we have just been talking a few minutes ago. And personally, I feel that the accuracy of the biometer itself has improved. I have a feeling that what Zeiss has done is it's taken the direct topography readings and fed them in, in addition to the topography evaluation it originally had, and that has enhanced the accuracy. Because in the last three months that I've been using it with the topographer built in, it does seem to make a difference. Also, the other interesting factor is the topographer, which comes with the IOL master, measures only the central three to three to four millimeter zone, which is the area through which the patient is going to see subsequently. So it gives you a pretty accurate idea as to what is happening. With the regular topographer, you get a big view. And as they say, you know, when you're seeing 3D or uh, stereoscopic, the small little abrasions in the middle get missed out. The other advantage of the Callisto system is that you can utilize a Zeiss forum to get your details. And of course, you can feed your data in. So this, I think, does make a significant difference. It has made a difference to me. Uh, my regular routine in my regular work is 30% of all my IOLs, which I do 
or sometimes even more are multifocals and uh, therefore for me getting a perfect accuracy is really important and uh, the advantage of doing a transfer utilizing a jack means that you no longer have to worry about data being fed in the morning or not if you have a long list you are always worried as to whether your assistant has had his breakfast and whether he is going to feed the data and accurately because in the end you are scrubbed you are not going to feed anything so this system by which you call what i call as a seamless data transfer does make a significant difference and the big advantage is not only is the safety but the fact that your information is is comes across onto you and it's available under your ips so you know exactly what you are seeing and the advantage as one would say is that it gives you the information where you want it the other advantage of getting the data fed into the ips which is there both with the zeiss as well as with the alcon system mine is a zeiss system is that there's no distraction from the surgical field not only that if the eye rotates you ro your image will rotate with it so the toric changes which tend to occur when a person lies down compared to a measurement is in the vertical sitting position is no longer there so it has many advantages and the big advantage also is that it causes no distortion so the accuracy of fitting becomes much better and you get a perfect red reflex which is great as far as surgery is concerned let me just show you in a video so we know what it is then before i talk about it can i Oh, sorry. I don't want sound. Yes. Audio. Can we increase the audio? Yeah. I'm going to shut off the audio because okay. it's better that you hear me talk oh, rather yeah, yeah. than sure. talking to music. Sure, sure. So basically, I'm going to talk to you about how it is done. I'm going to talk to you steps as it runs around the line, so you get an idea as to what it can do. first of all the big advantage is ki you once your data is fed in uh, as you are operating down the line this is the surgery as it runs i have not edited it so it's basically an unedited version as one would say virtually unedited and this is my routine type of surgery which i normally do i use uh, my diamonds to make the opening here you can now lay on the cornea the exact size which you want to do and the size of the rexes which you like to do as you are aware i when i do my when i do phaco i like to tumble my lenses out so i normally use a slightly larger rexes size than others do my normal rexes size is 5.5 mm and the big advantage is here is you can get a perfectly round rexes sometimes the quality of rexes you get is so good you wonder as to whether i really i wonder sometimes whether i should have actually bought the other uh, system which we utilize for uh, a uh, system which we utilize uh, for uh, doing a uh, cataract surgery which is the catalyst now as you you have on options of changing the color that's why i put red blue and green you can alter it to any color which you like i normally prefer to use blue it gives me a sharper image but a lot of people have said that red is better used to use so this gives you the level and the access which you desire notice that as the eye changes it it's or talks the image moves with the torque so that at all times you can get the centering precise fitting exactly as you want it and that's a toric lens which is being fitted this is a size lens and you can then center it to fit it exactly as you want it to fit so it has the advantage that you can get a perfect fitting system at all times and that is exactly where you like to do and once you get it you know that you have literally placed your lens where you want it to and let us quickly look at some of the results as we have run down our refractive surgeries done this is just a small series of 3 uh, and a half thousand odd cases which we had done pre op and post op and uh, this is a residual power which we try try to get and the frequency of cylindrical power that is the important thing which you are looking at as you notice most of them accurately come there once in a while some of them jump out and that is this was before the 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 uh, the new tk values started coming in this is before the tk now that the tk values have started coming in and that we are utilizing it on the iwl master 700 uh it has made again a difference our best corrected vision is fine and our patients are happy which is the most important thing which we need to really there because they are the ones who are going to refer the cases to you 
patient symptoms which we tend to do we tend after a month after the surgery we ask them for glare, glare and halos and double vision and night driving difficulties just remember never ask them for the first month in the first month there is a certain amount of corneal haze which is there so that causes all these complaints to increase so ask them all your complaints afterwards you will you do get a few night driving difficulty a little bit of double vision occasional halos but these are all within limits the important thing is just remember that what you tell a patient before you operate him is considered quite normal if you tell him that after the operation around a headlight you will see two or three rings he is not bothered but you tell him after the surgery he says ka complication ho gaya you may not have fitted the lens properly so try and give the patient as much data as possible i have often turned around and said that the most important instrument that you can buy is essentially a counselor because she is the one or he is the one who will really make life interesting for you in summary thus precision and every step of your toric workplace is important you not only need to have precise measurements you need to be have a perfect time saving markerless alignment and of course you need to have a proper selection of your toric models matching to give you the results that you really want so in conclusion many developments will come developments will come but the aim final aim is total spectacal independence with excellent visual outcomes and that is ultimately where we all want to go for and as i tell all my patients that you will have this but there's always certain amount which you give so you have to tell them this as one would say that everyone wants happiness no one wants pain but you can't have a rainbow without a little rain in the sense that an occasional halo is quite normal but in lieu of that halo you are getting an excellent quality of vision